internet and melee. This is Casey, I'm 25 and 52. And today is the first day of school. So I'm not really going to talk about the first day of school today because I don't know what's going to happen yet because I haven't been there yet. Um, but I had a couple things kind of come together in my mind. So I thought I would talk a little bit about those things. First, I've been getting to know a lot of new people lately, and as I do that, I find myself thinking about how it is that I learn who people are and how I get to a point where I feel like I know people. And I realized, and I've realized this a bunch of times before, but I realized again, that what really makes me feel like I know someone is sharing stories with them about our lives and even just the the kind of nothing this is you know what happened one time at a party stuff for me that gives me context for a person and lets me know things about them that just the kind of surface level what's your favorite color or what kind of TV shows do you like doesn't quite get at um, you know, why do you like those TV shows, or what's a story about how you wound up watching that, or what do you, you know, what's a memory you have of being a kid? Those are things that tell me something about you that gives me a context for who you are now, um, rather than just this weird snapshot without any background. Um, and I think that we have a habit of seeing people as snapshots. Um, we as a culture, not you and I as individuals necessarily, though. Um, because we have this idea of ourselves as the central character in our lives, you know, because we are the central character in our lives, but we, you know, we think about ourselves as the hero of the movie, if you will. Um, and that makes it hard to, <laughs> to see the to extend my metaphors some more non-player characters as having background and depth. But the thing is that nobody's actually a non-player character. They're all real. This isn't one story. This is seven billion stories happening concurrently on one planet. My cat just knocked over a fan. The other thing that had happened was that yesterday, while I was washing my laundry and cleaning up the house, getting ready for the week, I watched some documentaries. I watched uh, the Prohibition one, and then Netflix was like, if you like that, maybe you'll like this one about the Dust Bowl. And so I watched it too. And through watching that, I had all of these moments of, we don't ever learn, do we? Uh, particularly when you talk about what we do to the planet, um, and the ways in which we act as if land, animals, plants, and people are resources that we can just use and use and use and use and that they'll never run out. Um, I saw particular parallels to what we're doing today when they talked about the treatment of migrant workers uh, who came to California from the Dust Bowl and um, some similarities between what we did that caused the Dust Bowl and some things that we're doing to the environment now. And this goes back to context. History is the context in which now happens. We have all of this backstory, all of these things that we've done and that we've learned theoretically and we move forward, but we don't necessarily remember the context. We assume that things just are the way they are, not that they got here somehow. But everything got to where we see it somehow. There was a process that happened, and everything exists in this wide context that goes way before now, and will go on way after. Um, so the question is, in this snapshot, how do we understand what has happened and make it so that what will happen is better 
than what is happening. At least that's my theory. Okay, so what's the point of all this? Well, there really isn't necessarily a point, but what I'm trying to get at is that in both our dealings with the wider world and our dealings with each other, it's important to consider what has been. It's important to consider the history of the person or people that we're interacting with, to consider lessons we've learned from previous interactions, and apply them to new interactions. So when we look at the situation in, say, Syria, we should look at what we've done before and the ways in which that's been problematic. We should look at how when we become too involved in somebody else's political working out, often the people we put in charge wind up awful. We should also consider our own history as a country that had a civil war and think about you know, when we were having our civil war and there was intervention from the world powers at the time, what was helpful and what was harmful and what was insulting and what would be insulting to us. This goes back to you know, the same sort of stuff that I'm always saying, everybody is just people. We all have the same level of realness and when we ignore that, we're liable to get ourselves into a lot of trouble, both on individual levels and on a global scale. So that's what I've got for today. And I hope it was interesting and made some quantity of sense. I'm gonna get ready to go to school and I'll talk to you in the future.